and another video from Eric Flight. Eric here, how you doing? Today's video will be on how to read a META report, M-E-T-A-R for pilots. Uh, we're going to discuss where to get it, um, how to read it in general, and uh, pick out the important stuff for a for pilots. So whenever you want to find out a meta report, um, what Real World Pellets will do is they'll call for a weather briefing. Or even before you go to the airport, if you want to just check on the weather, uh, you can go to aviationweather.gov. It's the Aviation Weather Center. And uh, pretty much it offers a lot of uh, tools for pilots. So what we do is we go to meta, METARS, excuse me, in the upper left here, and click that. And then it does store your recently uh, requesting metadata is here. Um, I'm gonna go with the airport that I usually fly out of, which is Plymouth, from Plymouth, Massachusetts, KPYM. And I have some other stations in the area, just to get an idea of whether around the place I'll add one more, I'll add Providence from my old home state, KPVD. And then uh, the format, I'm gonna go raw, because that's what we're talking about today, is how to read these things and get metadata. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a picture of this and we're gonna discuss how to read all this stuff. Here you will see the uh, meta report that we just got online from aviationweather.gov. And uh, we're gonna look at Plymouth, which is KPYM on the top here. Um, as we read from left to right, you'll see that it says KPYM. That is the four letter identification for Plymouth Municipal Airport in Plymouth, Massachusetts. As we go from left to right, you'll see a one, two, 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 Z. Uh, the first two digits stand for the 12th day of the month, because today is February 12th, so it's the 12th day of February. And it says 2222 Zulu time. Now, for uh, in my case, basically, I live on the East Coast, I'm living in Massachusetts. So what you need to do is you have to memorize how many hours you take away or add to Zulu time in order to get your local time. And what that means for me is I always have to uh, minus 5 on Zulu time. And it's, it's just like military time except you have to minus 5 from it. So if I take 22 and I minus 5, it's 17.22 in normal time, which means it was 5.22 p.m when this report was taken at the weather station in Plymouth. Uh, auto just means that it was automatically taken. Okay, the next part is really important. Um, you have 08006 KT. The first three numbers stand for the direction of the wind. And it says 080. That means that the wind is coming from 80 degrees. It's coming from 80 degrees. So in other words, the wind's blowing from almost dead east. It's 10 degrees off from dead east. And it's blowing at six knots. That zero six is for how many knots, okay? Sometimes you'll see a report where it has a G on it. A G means gust winds, and it will come right after the zero six. And it, if it was gusting up to 19 uh, knots, it would say zero six G 19. And that means gust up to 19 knots. But as you can see on our meta report, um, the the wind is basically not gusting, it's just six knots. Okay, the next uh, symbol we have in our meta report says 2SM. That tells you your visibility. So, uh, two statute miles of visibility, uh, which is not the best for visual, uh, visual flight rules. Right here, dash SN and BR. That stands for your weather conditions. You won't always see these here, but uh, right now in Massachusetts it is snowing. And I believe BR stands for mist, but there are ways of checking those two letter codes up. So SN stands for snow, and BR stands for mist, which, which there is definitely outside. And next to that is BKN005. This is the, uh, describing your, your cloud layers, basically. Um, you have broken clouds at 500 feet, basically. What you do is you take the number attached to broken, and broken is... Uh, is symbolized by BKN. So it says broken clouds. And you add two zeros to whatever the number is at the end. So this says 005. So we add two zeros at the end, and that comes up to 500 feet. So there's broken clouds at 500 feet in the air. 
the next symbol says OVC, which means overcast. Um, and again, you add two zeros to the last number. So it means, oh, it's overcast at 900 feet, which means that this would not be a day to be flying VFR. The uh, next thing is your temperature and dew point. Uh, what you really look for here is you look for the numbers, and if they're far apart, it means that there's probably precipitation not likely. And if they're close together, like it is on this one, it says 01, and it says slash M01, that means meteorological conditions 01. You can see that the numbers are the same. That means that there's gonna be precipitation, most likely, because your dew point is near the temperature. And remember that that temperature is in Celsius. It is not in Fahrenheit. In America, we like Fahrenheit, but uh, we follow Celsius on meta reports. The next thing we see is the A2977, and that's your pressure altitude. Um, on your altimeter, you want to enter this in for the pressure, 29.77. Standard is 29.92, but you see that if the conditions change over time. And that way it makes your altimeter accurate because it reads at the right pressure that's supposed to be at. Anything after RMK, RMK stands for remarks. And usually what they do is they give the sea level pressure or some other information that, that they deem necessary. Uh, pilots will definitely take a look at that, but the more important things are to the left of Remark. And Remark, you're just looking for just, just severe weather, visibility, um, notams, if you will, from the weather station. Um, and that's basically how you read a, a meta report. Now, you're probably wondering why are we getting all these other reports with Plymouth? Well, if I'm flying out of Plymouth, I want to know what the weather's like around us. Uh, K Tan is this place called Taunton. It's about, I want to say, 15, 20 minutes to the west of Plymouth. So if I'm heading west, I can kind of see what's going on over there. Uh, Boston is north of Plymouth. Um, so that way, if I'm heading north, I can see Boston there. Uh, KSFZ is where I used to live when I was growing up, and that's uh, North Central State Airport, and that's in Rhode Island. Uh, it says Smithfield, but it's near a town in Lincoln where I used to grow up. So if you're going a little further west, you can kind of compare the difference between Taunton and North Central State. Um, KBID, I just kind of threw that in there for fun. That's Block Island. That's uh, to the to the uh, basically it's south of Rhode Island. It's part of Rhode Island, but it's an island. So if you're heading out over the waters, you'll see what's going on over there. And KPVD is the other major airport in the area. That's Providence, Rhode Island, and that just basically is another western. What's going on there? Um, there's nothing wrong with getting other airports in the area if you're flying visual and just in the area for fun. But as you can clearly see here, it is definitely not a day for a VFR pilot to be flying because of the snow and the mist and uh, just overcast at 900 feet in Plymouth, you'll, you, you can't fly in that as a visual pilot. There are uh, rules that you have to follow. So anyways, that's what we use meta reports before and that's also how you read them. Um, just some general notes at the end here. Those two letter codes, uh, like in Plymouth where it says SNBR, snow and mist, uh, you can look those terms up. Um, some, I know on my kneeboard for when I fly, it's actually on my kneeboard so that you can look them up. Um, you do want to memorize them over time, but again, it's from repetition. Uh, you won't remember all of them all the time, so that's why you need to have a uh, reference so that way you can do that. But uh, the biggest thing is knowing how to read this thing in general so that way you can get it going. And uh, yeah, so that's my video on how to read a, a meta report. I hope it's useful. I know when I was first flight simming, even before the lessons, I had no clue how to read these. And I, I looked online and I just couldn't find a good resource for that. Everyone makes it so technical, but it's really not if you just take your time with it. So, that is how you read a uh, meta report in general. And I hope you enjoy the video.